Shabbat Shalom, Mishpacha. This is the Kohen speaking. Okay, uh, before we get into our Torah Pasha today, which is Bechuchtai, and that is from the book of Leviticus, chapters 26, verse 3. Before I get into that, I think it will be pertinent that we do a prayer and uh, give thanks to God for the things that is done for us this week and of course you know the paths that we have walked and that we have come through so I'll start with the a reading in Psalms bear with me so we'll go to let's see let's open my Psalms book okay we'll go to Psalm 15 Ayud Hewahe who shall abide in your tent who shall dwell in your holy mountain? He that walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He that does not slander with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors them that fear Yudhe Vahe, he that swears to his own hurt and changes not. He that puts not out his money to usury, nor takes reward against the innocent, he that does these things shall never be moved. What a beautiful psalm. We will go to Psalm 26. Judge me, O Yodhevahe, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in Yodhevahe, therefore I shall not slide. Examine me, O Yodhevahe, and prove me. Try my kidneys and my heart, for your loving kindness is before my eyes. And I have walked in your truth. I have not sat with men of falsehood, neither will I go in with men of pretense. I have hated the congregation of evildoers. I will not sit with the wicked ones. I will wash my hands in innocence, so will I surround your altar, O Yudhevahe, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. Yudhevahe, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where you respect dwells. Do not gather my soul with transgressors, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in my integrity, Ransom me and be merciful to me. My foot stands in a straight place. In the congregation will I kneel before Yudhe Vahe. We come before you, Abba, and we thank you. We thank you for this week. We thank you that you have taken us to various places and brought us back home safely. We thank you for the food provisions that you have made on our tables every day of this week. We thank you for giving us our health. We thank you for giving us the occupation, the jobs that we do, the salaries that we receive, and with the ability to perform the work and with the right amount of intelligence and wisdom that you have granted us. I thank you for all of that, for my students that are with us, the House of Israel. I petition for Israel generally as, as a nation and for our regathering back to the nation. I thank you, Abba, that you have established the nation of Israel and that you will take us back to our nation one day and you will establish the third temple and you will also establish the priesthood back in the land so that the service may begin giving you thanks and giving you glory. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We give you big thanks to Da Abba that we have waited for this moment. Abba, we waited for this moment where we have been petitioning and asking for guidance and asking for help. Abba, I have been petitioning to you for my students, for their prosperity, for their abundance, and you have really come through with the answer this week. And I'm so very grateful, so very grateful that many of my students who have taken up the, the, 
the door of abundance that you're going to prosper them tremendously I'm so happy for them I give you thanks Abba even though initially my students and friends you know they were just I guess some of them were skeptical some of them had doubts some of them you know who were with me they gave up part way and they left but those that stayed steadfast those that kept the faith those that kept trusting in you they are the ones that you are about to give a tremendous blessing and I'm so excited to share this at least partly with the public so that they may know that there is a God that we serve and that God is the God of Abraham Isaac, Jacob, Moses and the rest of the prophets that came down the line thank you we bless your holy name thank you, thank you, thank you so I want to start with the fact that uh, I had actually spoken with my students privately but uh, well I guess I'll give you the, the, the I guess these are the notes and I st spoke to them privately and, and I had for some of my students I had prepared a recording to 10x their income so I guess you know I guess before I you know originally when I started with this work I had asked for 10x and this is you know maybe going back more than a year and then after the 10x recording I went on recently to seek for most of the students that were with me to double their income and to double again and double it again a number of times so during this particular time I was confident that we are at the stage where God is about to hear our petition God is about to hear me hear my petition and start sending the increases the blessings that I was seeking for my family for my students and God came through with a mighty blessing not only is God going to multiply some of my students income not 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 doubling it only but he's going to double it and double it and double it and double it and on it goes and you know one student I was speaking to and he was you know r reporting back to me that he had changed his affirmation uh, to not only double his income a number of times but also that he wanted to because of the increase that he saw the increase that I sent his way the blessing that I sent his way he figured out that actually he's going to be getting a 100% increase 100x increase he's going to 100x his income think about what I just said 100x his income remember it was maybe eight months ago maybe six months ago I made an announcement here publicly that three of my students were gonna become millionaires okay so I guess you know people you know take these things in passing and they forget about them but I didn't forget about them I kept that thought kept that petition in my mind and continued working with it and so eventually we have come to the place now where not only can I say three students if my students follow my plan if they do what I'm asking them to do I can declare to you today that I'm looking at at least eight of my students becoming millionaires so we, we, we will see where this goes but I want to give thanks to God that he has provided for us uh, an avenue of blessing that uh, we will definitely be pursuing and uh, it is not for your public but it is for my students only at this point in time and for those that have been faithful because if we look at the Pasha this week it says if you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them it doesn't just say read about it doesn't say look at it and it doesn't say think over it it says if you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them then I will give you rain in due season what is this rain by the way this rain is not just water coming from the skies water is very important yes 
So very important for our sustenance. Without water, I mean, where would we be? We would probably die of thirst. We would probably not be able to take our baths. We would not be able to wash our face, rinse our mouth, do you know daily brush, toothbrush and stuff like that, shaving and other things, and most of all, water for cooking. Now that's one type of water. But here that we are talking about the rain that God was about to bestow upon our land where we are today, the increases, that was not just normal water. There's actually a, sim, there's actually a euphemism in there of rain, meaning blessings. God is about to bless our people tremendously in the due season. That is now. And it talks about extending the grape crop. The, the grape crop shall extend to the sowing time and you shall eat your bread, your lachem, to the full and dwell in your land safely. And I will give shalom in the land and you shall lie down and none shall make you afraid. Listen, when your homes have peace, when your wives are at ease, your children are doing great, you have the finances to send your children to good schools, you have the finances to purchase items that your family needs and even beyond that you know when you have finances for that what do you think will ensue peace will ensue happiness will ensue and many other things will follow when people say that hey money can't buy happiness I think those people are misguided people a lot of people are misguided in this world likes of Mike Tyson and likes of other people that sit with him you know, because they turn around and say, Mike Tyson will turn around and say, oh, I lost my $400 million. Uh, you know, maybe he'll talk about learning that he did not, you know, get happiness with the money. So he kind of, you know, shrugs it off. Oh, I only got a million dollars left. And, you know, money can't buy happiness along those lines. You know, they, they'll come to the radio shows and talk about the baloney that they do, which is total BS, by the way. Money is a vehicle that can allow you to prosper and be happy. Yes, money can buy happiness. Look, if you don't buy gifts for your wife, for your spouse, or your husband, in the due times, do you think you're going to have lasting marriages? Ask yourself that question for a second. If it's your wife's birthday, or your husband's birthday, and you don't go buy a gift, and you just ignore it, and you carry on, I'm pretty sure before long you're going to have fights in your home. You're going to have arguments. You're going to be quarreling with each other. So, does money buy happiness? 100% yes it can. Money can make it very easy for you to go buy a gift and make your spouse, make your that you know sister that didn't want to see you, now you give your sister a gift and suddenly she wants to see you. Now those friends that didn't want it to be your friends, they see money coming to you, they all want to be your friends. Does money buy happiness? Money actually does a lot more than just happiness. Money can not only buy happiness, money can get you great friends. Money can get you into places that you can never, never get into. You know, I had a, a student who wanted to go to Texas and she was thinking about going to Texas and then she said, you know what, I don't want to get the vaccine and I'm not going to go to Texas because if I go on a normal airline, they're going to ask me to queue up and then they're going to ask me to prove my vaccine and sorry, I don't want vaccine for COVID and I, I can't travel. So I said to her, I said, what if, what if God made a provision for you and you were able to travel? And she said, I don't know what the private ticket is. I said, no problem, I can check that and tell you what the private ticket is to Texas from where you are. And I checked, and the private ticket for the private plane, private jet, was $12,000 there and back. I said, well, you know, it's $12,000. She said, she said, okay, she said, well, when I have the money, I would definitely like to travel with this, you know, go privately. I don't have to worry about vaccines and this, that, and the other, and queuing up and, you know, get VIP service. And you know, this week, I can report to you that that friend of mine will be in possession of $12,000 very soon. And I was telling her, and that blessing came through me, and I told her, I said, you know what, now you can make that flight to your sister in Texas. She said, yeah, I can do that now. I can, you know, go to the airport and catch a flight for $12,000. And I can be with my sister and back, no problem. So, it's possible. 
you know we were just talking about that last week and this week has become possible nothing is impossible but what made it happen you know money you know so money is an important ingredient and without money she couldn't go and see her sister and if she goes and sees her sister the sister will be happy and this student of mine will be happy so does money buy happiness think about what I just said so these you know YouTube people I call them YouTube fakesters you know they're fakesters that you see on YouTube and radio stations that come and make these claims that certain things can't happen and certain things will never happen to blah 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 and money is you know not exactly what people make it out that's actually baloney by the way without money you can't buy food without money you can't drive from A to B so money is a vehicle for many many things and those people that tell you that money can't buy happiness well they need to you know they need to live a, they need to live without money for maybe four weeks of their life and they will realize that they'll be the most miserable person on this earth because they don't have money to do nothing if you want to see people who are the most unhappiest I encourage you to look you know go to London and look at people that are lying in cardboard boxes at night trying to sleep there you know go to New York and see people on the street begging for a dollar spare change and then you know some of those people are very miserable why because they don't have money to buy food they don't have money to rent a home they don't have money to to buy a car they are the most miserable people on this planet why not because it's their fault to be miserable is because they have a need and that need is not met so the people you know are miserable and if they had the money they wouldn't be miserable so does money buy happiness money buys you many things money buys you security money buys you happiness money buys you love money buys you great home to live in great car to drive you know I just gave you an example of a woman trying to travel from one state to another to just meet her sister that she hasn't met for a while and she only talks to her on the phone so would it buy her happiness yes absolutely so these cliches that you hear on YouTube and on these radio stations are nothing but you know lies from the pit they're just lies and people want to keep you in darkness so beware for you know from such things and just avoid such 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 nasty kind of people and nasty kind of talk it's nothing but nasty talk it's nothing but fakehood because they want to implant this in your head so you remain poor see they do that deliberately they want to implant this this radio stations media they do that so that you remain poor and whilst they can have the money and carry on their lives as if nothing changed you know I know a family in India okay this is facts on the ground now I know a family in India that is waiting to buy an auto basically a three wheeler vehicle and they drive that over there to earn money the man d doesn't have the money to buy an auto he has gone to several people to get a loan but he doesn't have a property to get a loan so nobody's willing to give him a loan and you know that family approached me and they said please you know if you can assist us to buy an auto then you know the the the, the man wants to earn enough money to be able to feed his family sometimes they struggle for food yeah sometimes they struggle for food they don't have money for food or bills and you know I have sent them money for food and bills on a number of times to help them when they were ill I sent them money when they have no money for food I sent money for food and I said to them do not worry God will make the provision just be patient and as soon as God makes a provision for your auto I will make sure that you have that money yeah I made that promise and guess what if they get the money for their auto will they be happy will they have you know will they have peace in their homes yes they will and how much is the auto well let me give you a rough example twelve hundred dollars twelve hundred dollars buys them security for their food every week do you think money buys you happiness you bet your bottom dollar it does you bet it buys the food they need to eat you bet it buys the the you know pays for the bills they need to pay so yes you know this is the reality on the ground it's not the BS that you hear from YouTube and radio stations people out to make money 
you know, people who want to monetize on YouTube channels and give you the baloney and you believe it. It's all not true. It's false. Fakery. So, this is a reality on the ground. Reality is when people, poor people, don't have food to eat, they die. They get ill. But when poor people have a helping hand, somebody helps them, then buys them food, not because he's out to get them or he wants something back, but simply because, you know, he loves God and he feels that maybe, you know, he can help somebody and, you know, get on their feet in life and be happy in their life. You know, what a, what a tremendous, you know, thing to think about. Think about that for a second. You know, if there is a person on this planet who thinks for somebody else and wants to help them, then you're a great man. You're a great woman if you do that. And I commend you for that. So, money can do a lot of things. A lot of good things can be done with money. And I encourage you to do them. Yeah, I encourage you to do them and not criticize and not see money in a negative way. Those people who see money negatively, they remain poor. And, and, and poverty never leaves them. Sorrow never leaves them. And a lot of the times it's that. So, that's that. Now, coming back to America. Little news on America. You know, when America sneezes, the world catches a cold. When our policy makers over here, they rightly or wrongly make a policy, everybody, Tom, Dick and Harry wants to follow it. You know, everybody is a stooge of America. Let me, let me be honest to you. Everybody, every country out there is a stooge of America, including the United Kingdom, by the way. No, it's, you know, it's not the other way around. It's not UK commanding everybody else. It's actually America commanding everybody. And that includes Israel as well. So, Everybody's a stooge to America. America has a lot of influence. If America raises rates, everybody wants to raise rates. Look at it. You know, Chairman Powell, although his policies suck, you know, they are the worst policies that any, any chairman can make. You know, banks have collapsed. People have suffered, lost their homes. Businesses have gone under. But does he stop? No, he doesn't. So does that show you that he, he you know, cares about people's you know, people's lives, I'm not so sure, because I don't have to say it, many congressmen and many congresswomen are saying it, that this man is, you know, hell-bent on destroying businesses and destroying people's livelihood. It's all, it's all over the place. But when he raises interest rates to 25 basis point, every Tom, Dick and Harry, including the UK, raises it as well. What does I show you? Exactly what I said. So, that was the latest new round of news in America. The rates were raised over here and everybody, Tom, Dick and Harry in Europe and everywhere else followed suit, including New Zealand, by the way. So, the other thing is this, that, you know, our country over here is involved in a war, proxy war, between Russia and Ukraine. I don't want to speak too much about that, of who's right and who's wrong, but Everybody who has eyes to see and ears to hear can see who is on the right path and who is on the wrong path. And much can be said and much can be learned from these things. But sadly, for now, weapon sales make good business. So, the war continues. I know that some African leaders, they were concerned and they called for a meeting and they said that we really need to have a meeting with Russian president and the president of Ukraine Zelensky so that we can bring some kind of you know peace some kind of end to this war that African nations are suffering from this as a result of the war you know there's maybe shortages of wheat shortages of uh, uh, fertilizer and other things so yes, so African leaders have stepped in the foray and have asked that they would like to speak to the two leaders at some point and will try to, you know, they said that, you know, achieving peace is difficult, but, you know, we still would like to talk to the leaders and see, you know, if there's some, some way that this, this war can be brought to an end. I, I'd say it's a commendable effort. 
It's a commendable effort by the African leaders and sure, it must be tried. I do personally believe that America is long due for leadership change and leadership change is coming to this nation. It is coming, but I think it will be in the next election. So we may see more wiser leaders that come to this nation and make wiser decisions for this nation and for these people and of course the rest of the world. So that basically, by the way, is the latest news. As you know, if you live in America, you would have heard that there is a debt ceiling uh, talks going on and uh, if America falls into default it's going to cause millions of jobs to go however I will say this that America is not going to fall into default and America will meet its obligations this is just politics on the ground gold prices have drastically gone down oil prices have come down gas prices have come down as a result of all this going on so maybe that's uh, maybe that's a good thing that the gold went down and gas went down and uh, you know liquid natural gas went down so yeah, that's maybe a good thing not a bad thing as a result but I guess once they conclude their talks which will be concluded uh, you know within the next couple of weeks the, the talks will be concluded and the debt ceiling will be raised for America then you know you're going to see that prices will rise back up so that's where the news is now coming back to the the Torah portion Torah reading then God talks about following in his statutes now talking about the statutes and God's commands one of the commands that God gave is obey my fest you know keep my festivals and by the way the festival of uh, Pentecost Shavuot is going to be coming on May the 24th and May 25 for the diaspora. So mark the date in the Enoch calendar, May 24, May 25, and celebrate the festival. You know how you celebrate is very easy. You you know have a meal with your families, pray and have a meal. A meal can be uh, a fish and other things with the fish, and you know topped up with the dessert of your choice and a meal can also be beef or lamb topped up with dessert again and you do it according to your custom every country every nation where our people are they each have their own separate customs so the customs are not same universally one country has one custom another has another custom so whatever is your custom you do it according to your custom you are allowed to set whatever meal tray you like there's no restrictions on this by the way you you know before you take your meal this is the time that the Torah was given to the nation of Israel and uh, publicly that is it was given as a covenant so it's a very important time it's a time what we call the marriage renewal the marriage renew renewal of Israel that's you so this will be your marriage renewal renew your marriage vows with God and uh, be in the covenant be in the covenant and be happy that God is with you and God is, is blessing you and God is going to tremendously bless some of you that you, you know, you're not going to know what to do with all those blessings so I'm very happy to report that that uh, you know be prepared for the festival enjoy your festival with your families and uh, you know love your families respect your families respect you know respect your mother and your father and God says for I will have respect to you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you and you shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new and I will set my tent among you and my soul shall not abhor you and I will be continually in your midst and will be your power will be your God and you shall be my people what a wonderful, wonderful promises. God is an amazing God. He is a beautiful God. He is a loving God. He loves us. He adores us. He sees us as the apple of His eye. He prospers us. He gives us abundance. It is your right. It is your birthright to be abundant. It is your birthright to be prosperous. So claim your birthright. You know, 
out with the out with the old you know the diseases out with the diseases out with the you know debts bad finances bad jobs bad salaries and in with the new new salaries you know new health new jobs new income new businesses and a new you so god is about to tremendously bless you at this time and people of house of israel i want to declare this to you today that we have waited for this time for a while yeah we we waited for this time i mean we've been you know praying to god and seeking god and petitioning for for this kind of blessing to come to our lives for about 4 years now since 2018 actually more than 4 about 5 years now 5 years and some of my students who have remained faithful and steadfast and are still with me those are the students that are going to get the tremendous blessings you know one student i spoke with this week and i was telling her about the blessing and she is like really are you sure is this for, is this for real <laughs> i said yes for real and when she now sees it when she now actually sees the blessing you know it, the money that she was so, you know is going to get now she actually sees it and she's about to receive it you know what that amount is i will withhold that from public i won't tell you but i can tell you it's a six figure amount. well it's actually in her case it's a uh 1 2 3 5 figure amount for most of the people is five figure but it's a significant five figure amount it's not a small amount so when she receives her significant five figure amount she is going to be on top of the moon <laughs> i tell you she is on top of the moon she couldn't believe it i showed it to her in her account she's like wow she said this is amazing i said yeah god is about to bless you tremendously and so get ready for the blessings so those of you who are steadfast who who listen to me who have faithfully tithe faithfully paid your sada ka faithfully kept the festivals faithfully kept the sabbaths god is going to give you tremendous blessing and those of you i and i'm so happy to 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 be at the, here at this point to see you you know one of my students was so happy he said to me you know at last i'm going to be able to receive my blessings and i'm going to be able to travel and he goes i want to give up my job and i want to travel i want to travel out and see my family at the other end of the world and spend some time over there i said sure i said yeah when you go to see your family drink coconut juice over there as well plenty of it in the country where he's going so yeah you know we 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 have tremendous blessings coming our way tremendous actually they've already come <laughs> we just about to you know as i say cash the blessings in so brukh hasham i'm so happy i'm so happy and so those that didn't listen what did god say to those god said to those that if you will not yet for all this hearken to me then i will punish you seven times more for your sins and i will break the pride of your power and i will make your heavens your shamaim as iron and your earth as bronze i thank god that we are not in that category we are in the category that listen to god that obeyed him that obeyed his statutes and god is open the door of blessing and guess guess who god used to open the door of blessing guess who he used me the coin in the gate he used me to open the door of blessing and i'm so happy that you know a lot of my students are going to be over the moon <laughs> and you know they're going to be over the moon and maybe they're going to mars next <laughs> so brukh hasham brukh hasham brukh hasham to daraba to daraba to daraba you know it's amazing that patience pays obedience pays but disobedience will never pay back it will never pay i was reading to you the psalm earlier and i wanted to go back to the psalm and just pick up a few points from the psalm uh let me uh open up the few points from the psalm give me a moment let me go there uh let's see we were in psalm 15 i believe and if i go to psalm 15 let me see and it says he says he that walks upright uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart okay he that does not slander with his tongue 
nor does evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend. You see, if you are a righteous person, you're upright, you are nice to other people, you are helpful to other people, you do the, the great works that God asks you to do, you, you don't go around slandering your neighbors, your friends, you don't go, go around slandering your teachers, your elders, and you're not an evil doer. There will be no reproach against you. God will prepare a blessing for you. And this is what God is saying. That if you are righteous, if you walk upright, you do the right things, then a blessing is assured for you. It's your guarantee. You are guaranteed blessings. There's no question about it that your blessings are guaranteed from the moment you start doing these things. But if you, if you do otherwise, then of course, it's siyanaro. You know, there's no blessings in the other things in, in life. So, we don't even want to talk about it. We don't want to talk about it because it is as it is. So, with that, you know, I'm, I'm happy to report, very happy to report that God is awesome. God is a great God. And I want to give thanks to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And I want to thank you for listening to me this week and to this, to this little lecture and to the updates that we have and uh, next week I will report more back to you and uh, maybe tell you a little bit more but if those of you who are my students who want to know more about this investment and how you can be part of the blessings by all means you know the doors are open for you you can contact me on email and we can discuss it and we can take it from there and uh, so with that have a wonderful Sabbath and I think I, I may speak, speak to you uh, prior to the festival and uh, which cause the festival is on the 24th and uh, it's before the next Sabbath so I may speak to some of you prior to the festival but others of you I will not speak till after the festival so enjoy your festivals have a lovely beautiful beautiful time remember do not come empty handed before God Send in your zatakas, your tithes, your charitable offerings. Send those in and be faithful to God and God will bless you tremendously. Baruch Hashem, may you live long and prosper. Baruch Hashem. Shabbat Shalom and Shalom Shalom to you.